Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Kay, and I'm here today to bring you Swagger Season 2, Episode 6, Crystal Plus Jace. Y'all, I'm trying to get myself together because I'm going to try my best to get through this without acting silly because I am immature. <laughs> Crystal and Jay start off running, okay? So as we left off in the last episode, Jace and the players were told that they had to apologize to the board at Mar of Maryland, the state, um, and they will immediately be reinstated, okay? Um, so we see Jace running up that same hill and doing those same push-ups that his mama used to do when he was younger. And then we see Crystal running with her team through the park, you know, as a part of conditioning and everything. Um... So, you could tell, like, mentally, Jace was just not in a good place. All because he was stressed. A lot of the um, offers that he was receiving were backing out. Um, I think he lost some NIL deals. And his mama, Jenna, tried her best to be supportive to Jace during this time. I definitely had the feeling um, the whole time, though, that even though Jace loved basketball, he was not going to apologize for what he did. And I actually felt that way on the bus because I'm just like, there's no way he's going to apologize for what he did. I was, and I don't know why the, the school board was so pressed on getting an apology anyway, because honestly, that didn't even have nothing to do with them in the first place. Like he did that when he was 14. That man was abusing Crystal. Um, Crystal is still triggered by it. She even told her therapist that in one of the scenes. And it was just, you know... It was a lot, you know? Um, so they get to the board and Musa, Phil, um, Drew, and Jace, all their families are there. Zoe is there. Ike is there. Meg is there. Um, Naeem Rahim is there. And um, basically, Zoe was just letting them know that he had pulled a lot of strings so that they could get before the board just to apologize and that that apology may not even be taken, you know, into consideration. This is just a formality, something that they had to do. And so, um, when it came down to it, Jay stood up first and I ain't even gonna hold you. We did find out later that, um, Nobody knew that Jace was going to stand up and not apologize, but Ike knew. And um, it was just a solidarity that his teammates followed suit and said that they all felt that way. They didn't leave him by himself. So that's still, that whole brotherhood thing is still very valuable and still means a lot. But just for Jace getting up to stand up and say what he believed in, he said he was sorry that he felt like that the system felt crystal. And he wasn't going to rehash everything that happened to Crystal. He said, but he said he know that it wasn't right. But he also said he felt like it wasn't wrong. And so the board basically asked them, do they feel like they all agree with that decision? They said yes. And so basically, Zoe and all of them was pissed because they felt like their chances of moving forward as a team was over with. Because the board was, you know, adamant about them apologizing. So, um, Jenna stood beside Jace and I was happy to see her support Jace because Jenna understood, like Jenna just understood and he, and she knew like Jace would do anything for Crystal. And I think all of them knew that he would do anything for Crystal. And so it just wasn't, you know, surprising that that had happened. Um... We hear Crystal in we hear Crystal in therapy. She's talking to her therapist and she talks about um Roderick and she basically says it's like Roderick was just there for her. But um she felt like, you know, she was at, at a better place in life. She said she did have one moment though where she kind of felt like she was losing it and it's when she got re-triggered when she would see pictures of Coach um, Warwick's face and she would hear his name that she got triggered. 
And so I, th I thought that it was still good that even at years later, Crystal was still in therapy because with her taking that therapy, it allowed her to get to um, a better place, especially with her, you know, not wanting to be a victim, but somebody who overcame this situation that happened in their life. And so I was, I was happy to see um, Crystal get through that. Um, Jenna goes in to chase, chase, Lord have mercy. We ain't got there yet, Kayla. Jenna goes into Jason's room and she checks on him and he's looking at this maze of like McDonald's All-American and, um, he puts it under his bed and she asks him, is he okay? And he really don't have, you know, much to say. He's real quiet. Um, but he asked her for a mental health day. Could he not go to school that day? He wanted to stay home. And so she was just like, well, you know, with her um, cosmetic, because, you know, she's heavy into the cosmetics now as a consultant. And so she said that she had this event, you know, all the top selling um, consultants go. And so they basically, she was going to go there to, you know, potentially be honored for all her hard work. And it was in New Jersey. And so she asked... Um, Jace, if you want to go, and he was just like, you know, I'll get back with you on that. I don't really have an answer now. Um, then we go to the next scene where the coach is on the phone, Ike is on the phone with a college coach, and he's pretty much, you know, talking about how good of a player he is, but we don't know which player he's talking about. It's assumed that it was Jace, but we don't really know which player he was talking about. And so he was saying how, you know, um, He's good. You know, all of this stuff that's going on is just, you know, a distraction. He's a good kid. He, he, you know, he's just selling, selling the player. And so basically the coach come out and say that the AD was telling him that he ain't no good and that he don't, it's a waste of time. First of all, <laughs> Mr. Lawson, Miss, Miss, Mr. Lawson, you got us as an audience messed up because how in the world as the athletic director of a school, these children were bringing funds to this school and all this good press and notoriety to this school and they have one hiccup and you ready to throw them all under the bus and roll over them. And you bad mouthing kids, you talking about trying to create avenues in future for black students but yet you're on the phone talking to coaches and you're saying disparaging comments about the kids how is that supposed to be helping move the culture forward because it's it's, it's detrimental it's really it's really setting stuff back you're doing too much um so t ike wants to cuss him out and is adamant about punching, <laughs> punching, punching up, okay? But his wife, Tanya, like the good wife she is, she is supportive. Her and Ike have great communication. They listen to each other. And she was just like, don't worry about it. I was supposed to have a meeting with him anyway, so I'll bring it up. And I'm glad that Tanya tactfully, with her very dense vocabulary, read him for filth, the filth that he is, because how dare you, sir? These are children. You get on the phone bad mouthing children to coaches, college coaches, messing up their future for something that they did that wasn't even in under your supervision. They did that years ago. Please. Um, so in the next scene, Crystal is driving in her car and she gets a phone call and it's a rep from the McDonald's All-American. She's calling to congratulate Crystal that Crystal made the All-American team. And so it was lit because I'm like, yes, Crystal girl, yes, ball is life, ball is life, girl. Yes, take it to the hole. Crystal is, you know, she's still moving forward with her dreams and I was happy for her because after all that she has gone through with being violated, you know, being dragged in the public, you know, not being able to move forward because something keeps coming up, 
you know, possible articles coming out, she still was able to accomplish her dream. And that's being the number one player in the DMV and playing on the McDonald's All-American team. So she ends up calling Jace to tell him the news, but because of all that's going on and she hears that Jace is not in a good mood, she decides to withhold that information from Jace and she just tells him, you know, what are you, what are you doing? And he tells her I'm at home. She was like, I'm coming to pick you up. So it was just funny because Crystal ended up taking Jace to the same skating ring where she gave him that green balloon. So it was like a full circle moment. I was like, yes. And of course it's like shortly after his birthday. And so I was like, oh, of course it's a theme night. It's giving ATL, it's giving old people skate night. <laughs> Crystal and Jace in there holding hands and skating across the floor. Like, um, what was Star Sky Mama name? When she was like, all right, babies, take care, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, they was in there. Why the people was not at work? That was in the middle of the day. The people was in the skating ring doing tricks. Whew. Anyway. My next point was Crystal Guy fans. That's so funny. I, bruh, when I be taking notes, bruh, I be cracking my own self up for real, for real. But yes, yeah, so this girl walked up to the table and asked for a photo and Jace automatically assumed it was for him, but it was Crystal. It was for Crystal. And this girl walked up to Crystal and was like, oh my gosh, you just are everything to me. You mean so much to me. Can I please have a picture with you? And she was like, oh my God, yes, girl. That's what you just said is everything to me. And Jace had to be her photographer. I was like, yes, Crystal. Yes, ma'am, girl. Go ahead, take your picture. Crystal got fans. <laughs> anyway. So, I don't know. I was trying to understand and maybe possibly think about it. And maybe I'm just thinking too deep into it. But whatever, what the heck. It's a show. And they, they put stuff in to make you think. I was trying to figure out... Crystal has been going to therapy this whole time, but I was just wondering what made her get to the point to where she was really vulnerable with Jace. I mean, about her feelings, you know, in terms of like them being in a relationship because we kind of really didn't get it in between with the episodes. We went from Crystal and Jace not speaking to the reporter telling Crystal something. Crystal, well, Jace reached out to Crystal first because of his father, but Crystal ended up reaching back out to Jace because of the article. And then them having that two minute scene last episode before the guys went to the youth facility about why they, you know, took a break or whatever. And so it was just, you know, interesting to see, you know, with those few scenes, you know, we didn't have much dialogue with Crystal and Jace and very few scenes with them in together, you know, to see how things played out in between to get to the point that we got today, where she basically told Jace, like, you know, when you left Seat Pleasance to transfer to Cedar Cove, it really made me sad because I felt like I didn't have anybody. And, you know, Jace was always her rock when they were younger because Jace was the number one person that she felt she could go to, you know, for anything, you know? Because Jace even said it, like, in the car. He was just like, you were my best friend. I was not finna apologize for what I did when you were hurt. And he was just going to, you know, he always is making sure, you know, like Crystal is protected. He's going to do anything to make sure she's good. And so he's always, you know, been vocal with her about things like that. But just for her to come out and say like, that made me sad. And so I guess that's 
why she kind of distanced herself and why she kind of kept Jace at, you know, arm's length distance because she didn't know how to move about her feelings, you know? And so that led up to her getting with Roderick because she said that Roderick was a person who just listened to her. And then she ended up telling Jace that her and Roger officially like broke up. Like they're no longer together because the last time Jace and Crystal talked, they were on a break. Um, Jace's mama calls him and <laughs> Jace, bro, that part was hilarious because he told his mom he was at skating ring. She said, who you with? And he acted like his phone went out. He was like, hello, what? <laughs> Anyway, Jay's mama called, you know, to ask him what kind of room should she get for them, you know, to go to New Jersey. And so Jace ends up telling her, like, I'm not going to go with you. I'm going to stay home this weekend. And so I kind of started having feelings like Jace and Crystal is about to be active. And I was just like, oh, Lord Jesus, I don't think I'm ready for this. <laughs> I was like, I'm not ready for that. But honestly, the episodes building up to this, I kind of figured what happened tonight, what was going was to happen. Because if you think about back to his birthday, his mama gave him a box of raincoats for his birthday. And I was like, I don't think Jace is, I don't think Jace has been deflowered. So Jay's mama leaves and Jace invites Crystal over the house for the weekend. And she was like, no, no, no. <laughs> the last thing I'm about to be is another one on your roster. And I want to say, Crystal, girl, you don't have no roster, girl. You his one only always have been, always will be. Like, we have seen Jace sweat over Crystal so much. I have never seen her... You know, I know she cared for Jace and I know she loved Jace, but we just never, she never really came out and said it the way he has been vocal over the episodes. But Jace is talking to Crystal about, you know, the All-American team. And he said, typically you get a phone call before, you know, they announce it or whatever. And so Crystal wants to tell Jace that she got the phone call, but she's withholding information because I guess with everything he's going through, she just don't want him to feel bad or, you know, not be happy for her or nothing. So she don't say nothing. So Jace goes to get ice cream and he's checking the, the site to see if his picture is up there. But he scrolled down, he see Crystal's picture. And so he yells and tells, you know, their little section, it's came ring. That girl over there is all American. Like, um, so, you know, he says, well, did you get a phone call? And she was like, yeah, but I didn't want to tell you because, you know, I just didn't want to add any more news to your day or whatever like that. And this, this boy spazzes on Crystal. He was like, same old Crystal. Always holding stuff close. I was like, oh no. <laughs> oh no. Not same old Crystal always holding stuff close. What just, what? So apparently that's been something he's always felt. That Crystal has, you know, but she has. You know what? I just did say that. Like we... He always would tell her stuff, but she would always, you know what? I okay, Jace. Okay, Jace, I agree. Um, and then she was like, "Same old Jace, always thinking something is about you." And he was like, "No, it's me and my dumb self for always thinking that you can always do it. like he just." Jace was really upset. Like that really hurt my boy. That really hurt my boy. 
So she was like, he was like, the coach I called him and was like, okay, you got to get suited up for the game. So Jace was about to leave. She was like, I will drop you off, Jace. He was like, no, I'll live. And so he just leaves her sitting there. And I was like, dang, like, I don't think we ever seen, like, Jason Crystal have, like, no argument to the point where, like, he walked off from her. Like, because he would never, like, even when she would, like, get on Jace, he would just be like, okay, or, like, he'll listen to her. But, like, he walked off from her, so he was really hot. But anyway... So we get to the locker room and um, Ike and Raheem and Meg are talking and then Ike says something and then Meg was like, wait, did you know that they were going to do that? And Naeem, which I was surprised because Ike and Naeem are, are tight. Um... He was like, I'm sorry, Jace confided in me, but <laughs> that right there let me know that like Jace and Ike's relationship has really evolved because it was to a point where like Jace did not talk to Ike. He wasn't talking to Ike at one point. He didn't trust Ike. He, he said that Ike was the enemy within in season one. So now, like, he's calling Ike on a regular. He's telling Ike he's a good dad. He's, like, really, like, drawn to Ike almost to the point where Ike is like his father. Like, he goes to Ike as the father figure in his life, and Ike gives him instruction. And so um, the coaches were pretty, you know, a little bit upset about not knowing, especially um, Naeem. Because he said, Musa is my son. So I was trying to figure out if Jace even told Musa, Phil, and Drew that he won't go and apologize. Or if he just said it and, you know, expected them to do their own thing. But then they was just like, well, Jace is our brother. We gone, you know, we just gone agree. So I was just wondering if that was, you know, what the case was. Um. So um, Ike tells them... You know, there was a scene where um this girl was walking around school and she, you know, people were just not acknowledging her. And so Musa bumped into her and, um, you know, introduced himself. And then she went to Tanya and basically told her that she felt invisible. So then when Ike got in the locker room with the players, he said, anytime you see a, um, a queen, you need to... Show her extra love because the queens is who held all y'all down when y'all was going through. And so I think that um, message stuck with Jace. And it kind of, to me, was a full circle moment again. Because when Ike said that, it reminded me of that whole conversation about the 24-hour person. When Ike was talking in season one, when Ike was talking um, to Jace about what a 24-hour person is, Jace took what Ike said to heart. And then he felt moved to do something. So just like when he was talking about queens holding you down, supporting you, being there for you. If you show a queen love, she going to always ride for you. She going to always be there for you. And that made Jace think about Crystal. So after that, after that whole speech and after they said we are brothers, they did a little pregame chant. Jace went out into the hallway and called Crystal and apologized. And rightfully so, because I was going to tug at Jace's neck a little bit and be like, Jace, what was you doing? <laughs> But, you know, I, under, I understood where he was coming from because he was hurt. Um, Crystal also apologized. And, you know, they basically just communicated, you know, how they felt. Um, and then they went on to play the game. And so um, it just seemed like, you know, what I did, you know, they did a little senior, you know, run out where everybody jump and give dab and all that stuff. Very, oh, my God, nostalgia. Talk about nostalgia. Because we used to do that. I used to do that when I played basketball. But anyway. Um, I, you know, shed a little thug tear for the moment. And then it was nice to see the boys back on the court. Because you could tell that, 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 that magic was back. You could tell that fire was back. They all were very lit up. Um, the chemistry was on one ten. 
And you could see that Jace was back in his zone. Like he said, when he plays basketball, everything is just obsolete and he's in the zone. And you could tell that he was in that zone. And plus, I was so happy to see them play basketball again because I'm not going to hold you. Um, before last week's episode, they hadn't been playing basketball like that this season. I feel like they played basketball more in season one than they did this season. And so I was happy to get a little basketball scene because, again, it be the it be the passes and the dunks for me. Like, I just be here for all of it. Um, and that's just an aspect I really like about the show, that all the guys really actually play basketball. They not... Well, some of them were people who did not play basketball, but it's to the point where you can't even tell that they did. Um, and I like the fact that, like, it seems, it's so realistic when they play. Um, I said Jace apologizes to Crystal. Um, he plays the game. Now, when he started playing the game, I really thought that Crystal was going to be at the game. I thought she was going to end up coming to the game. And we saw that stupid look Amber had on. <laughs> <laughs> We saw that stupid look Amber had on her face um, during the game because, you know, Jason, all of them got reinstated. And she cut Jace off because she was worried about her reputation. But, y'all, we all knew that they was going to end up, you know, being reinstated and playing again. You know, we just had to go through the file a little bit. You know what I'm saying? You know, we just had to hear the story before we got to where we needed to be. Um... Jace apologizes to Crystal. Jenna is in okay so the scene then pans to jenna at her um consultation conference and jenna ends up winning a purple lexus y'all late she showed all her lady egyptian she was a top lady egyptian <laughs> then jenna go out to the car and watch the game on the phone i was like girl yes watching the game from your brand new purple lexus <laughs> Oh my God. So after the game was over, y'all, now, when I read the sentence and it said Crystal and Jason's relationship goes to a new level, I already knew what the new level was. I already knew what the new level was. So I'm just like, it's nowhere else for them to go. They've already been best friends they've already dated they already broke up so it's nothing left for them to do but get back together and hunch on each other so i i was expecting them to be physical this episode did i want to see it i did not <laughs> i did not because i and the reason why is because i know the actors are still so young um, this is Isaiah's first role as like a main character and Kovan Janae has been in the public for a while, but she grown now. And so it's, I got to get used to it. It was weird. I was definitely expecting, a, um, a Quincy and Monica moment this episode, but I just did not want it to be as detailed as Quincy and Monica's moment because y'all know Monica lost her virginity in um Love and Basketball. And <laughs> it was just kind of hard to watch sometimes because I was all I kept thinking about while Chris and Jace was in there was this woman's work. <laughs> oh my god. When Crystal knocked on that door, I was just like, girl, you just said he, you didn't want to be a part of his roster. I knew that Jace didn't have no roster, but just the comments that he made when his mama bought the topic up. You know how, like, sometimes when your mama or your parent bring the topic up, you say stuff and you know that you, they could tell that you've been doing something. But you just, you know, going along with making it look like you still innocent. But it was given Jace really hadn't done anything. And I was just like, and if Jace was out here being a whore, we would have seen it. <laughs> but we ain't seen Jace do nothing but love and sweat Crystal the whole entire time. So I figured that he was still, he still had his flower. And I still figured Crystal still had her flower. So... When Crystal 
got outside and said, scrub, it's me, open up. I was just like, oh my God, here we go. Then when she had them stupid giggles drinking that water, oh my God, y'all. I was on the couch like, I was telling my husband like, bro, why am I so nervous? <laughs> I was like, bro, why am I so nervous? <laughs> I was just like, this is awkward. I don't <laughs> I told you I'm not mature. I'm not mature enough for this. Oh my god! So anyway, so then she's like, "Oh, your house is really nice, mind you. She ain't never been over there because they've been living in that place for a year, and she didn't come to the house for it. So she ain't never been to the house. <sighs> and it's just crazy because her and Jace didn't really talk for like a whole year. Like besides, like I had 27 points, I had 35. Like they did the night when he was in the door. He was like, "Do you want to come in?" So she came in. He was like, do you want some water? And she was like, this is good work. I'm like, Crystal, out of all the things you could say, you talk about some. this is good work. Anyway, so he was like, um, do you want to see my room? I was like, oh, my God. At first, when he was standing at the door, I was like, okay, he's not going to go in. Okay, when he came in, closed the door, I was like, oh, my God. Crystal start taking her jacket stuff. I'm like, oh my God, they is really setting us up right now to watch this. <sighs> Jesus. I felt like the older sister watching they um younger siblings engage for the first time. And you know, I don't necessarily believe in um premarital, you know, situations. I believe in keeping your flower till you get your husband. But if I had any way to lose my flower, giving it to somebody that's your best friend and somebody that you love like that, like, you know, their their feelings were very strong for each other. They grew up, you know, being very cool, very tight for a long time. Then they dated. And then when he grabbed her face, and he was just like, Crystal Jerry, I love you and I have always loved you. I was like, oh my God. I probably would have became a puddle right there. I'm not even gonna hold you. I probably would have melted right there. <laughs> like I was like, there was no other way. That was I mean, and they was eighteen, so I guess that was long enough and and when he told her he loved her she didn't say anything until they you know made out a little bit and she told him back and then she was like I've never you know and he was like neither have I and I was like oh both of y'all taking each other flower, okay. So don't neither one of y'all know what y'all doing. That's probably the best time. <laughs> and then the episode ends, guys. So now we can I could be done. I'm done being immature. I just can't. It's too much. But yeah, y'all. So Isaiah, you can stop trolling us now. You and Q. Y'all can stop trolling the internet. Y'all got the children all in a tizzy on TikTok. Thinking y'all is together. You can stop the trolling now. <laughs> Cause y'all done had y'all left so and Jace probably is gonna be supportive to to Crystal at her, her All American game. And then, you know, we're gonna see what college he picked. He probably would end up at UMD. If he don't end up at UMD, I'm going to be shocked. <laughs> if he ain't at UMD, he's going to be somewhere down the street. <sighs> but yeah, so. That's my review, y'all. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll be back next week for episode seven. This is. <laughs>